Okay, hello everyone. I'm going to show you how you can use ray diagramming to determine or describe the images that can be formed by curve mirrors. So let's start first with concave mirror, or also known as converging mirror. So I have here my given, okay, distance of object 5 centimeters. The focal length is positive 3 centimeters. So for ray diagramming, we can actually use four principal rays. Okay, at actually at least two, okay, we can actually determine already the image that can be formed by a curved mirror. So first thing is you have to examine the area that you're going to use for the ray diagramming. And I know that five centimeters and three centimeters can fit in in my working paper. So first thing is I'm going to draw first my principal axis using this ruler. And once I have my principal axis, okay, the first, uh, another, the next is would be I'm going to uh, determine the important points. Okay, so first thing is since this is a concave mirror, okay, I will be working more on the front side. Okay, so I'm going to have enough space here in front of the concave mirror. But first, I'm going to determine or mark the vertex or the center of my concave mirror. So I'm going to mark a point here. So the next is after I determine my vertex, I'm going to measure my focal length, which is three centimeters. So using my ruler here, I'm going to measure three centimeters. Okay. So from here to here, that's my focal length. And this is my focal point or focus. Next, I'm going to mark would be the center of curvature. So it's very simple. You just need to double the value of your focal length so that you can measure the center of curvature or the radius of curvature from the vertex. Okay, so here, so I have two times three, I have six centimeters for my radius of curvature. So 3 cm here, I'm going to add more. Okay, so these are my important points, my vertex, my focal point, and of course my center of curvature. So I'm, so I'm going to label this, my focal point or my focused, and my center of curvature. Next, if you have your compass or protractor, you can actually draw your curved mirror, your concave mirror here from here. Since I don't have that, I'm just, I'm just going to estimate okay, my, uh, the drawing of my concave mirror here. Okay. So this is my concave mirror. And... Next is I'm going to mark where my distance, where my object is located in front of this concave mirror. So it is five centimeter, okay? So from the vertex, okay, I'm going to measure, okay, five centimeters. So here, okay, to this, this is my distance of the object. So distance of my object. Now, in my given, the height of the object wasn't mentioned, so I'm just going to assume that this arrow here is my object, okay, my object. So once you have this, you are now ready to use the four principal rays, and again, at least two will do. Okay, but if you can use all of those rays to verify or to determine the image formed by a, cur uh, by a curve mirror for ray diagramming, that would be better. Okay, so the next is, of course, I have my principal rays here. I have my okay, FP ray. I have my PF ray. 
I also have my VV ray and I also have my CC rays. So again, these are the principal, uh, these are the four uh, principal rays for ray diagramming for curved mirrors. So you have to remember that all the rays here on the left side, these are your incident rays. Okay, your incident rays. And those here at the right side, these are the reflected rays and they always come uh, in pairs. Okay, so FP ray, PF ray, VV ray, and CC ray. So first, let's have the FP ray. So when we say FP ray, an incident ray, okay, that is moving or passing through the focal point or the fo uh, focal point or focused. Okay, so this is our focal point here. So from the tip of our object, okay, an incident ray that is moving through or pass through the focal point or focus. So this is our F ray, okay, this one here. And of course, it will be re reflected parallel to the principal axis. So from here, okay, we have to draw a line that is parallel to our principal axis, okay. And let's put an arrow here. So this is now our FP ray, okay? FP ray, okay? Next, let's do PF ray. So when we say PF ray, first let's have the P ray here, which is an incident ray. So again, from the tip of our object, let's do a ray that is parallel to our principal axis. This is our incident ray. Okay, and let's put an arrowhead here. So this is our P ray. And again, it will be reflected passing through our focus or focal point. So here, okay, let's have our reflected ray. And it passed through the focal point or focused. Notice that our reflected rays merge at one point here but just to verify further we can still use our vv ray applying the law of reflection the law of reflection okay so again let's have our incident ray our incident ray from the tip of our uh, object here moving towards our v, v ray our vertex here Okay. And again, it will be reflected same angle as the angle of our incidence here. That's why it's called the VV ray. So it moves towards our ver uh, vertex here and it will be reflected from our vertex. And again, the angle should be the same. The angle here should be the same with the angle of the reflection. So let's have that. And as you can see, okay, the reflected rays all three you know, the three ref reflected rays merge at one point here and in since it's below the principal axis our the, the drawing of our image would be inverted so let's start first here from the merging point okay here and then let's draw an inverted okay so this is now the point where the reflected rays merge, okay, that's the point or place where our image, okay, uh, was formed. Okay, so this is now our image. Now, so now we can see clearly here, okay, the difference between our object and our image. Okay, so using the acronym LOST, let's have our acronym LOST here. L for location. So where is the image located? So here, our image is actually located beyond the center of curvature. Beyond the center of curvature, or we can simply say beyond the C, okay, or the center of curvature. 
And of course, for the orientation, it's obvious if we compare the orientation of our image to our object, it is inverted. Inverted. The image is inverted. And of course, for the size, okay, comparing the size, you can all actually use even your ruler. Okay, here and here. Obviously, our image is larger compared to the size of our object. So we could say the image is enlarged or bigger. And when it comes to the type of image, we all know that if the image was formed in front of a curved mirror, it is considered to be a real image. So the type would be a real image. Here's another example for ray diagramming for curved mirror, specifically for a concave mirror. So our given here, distance of object is 3 centimeters our focal length is positive 5 centimeters and of course the first thing that you need to do is to draw the principal axis and of course you have to determine the important points okay so let's have our vertex and let's measure our focal length from the vertex so using this ruler, we can measure 5 cm from here to here. That's actually 5 cm. So let's mark this as our focal length. And of course, next would be our center of curvature. So again, for our center of curvature, we need to double the value of our focal length. So 5 times 2, that gives us 10 cm. So let's have 10 cm here. So this is now our important points here. Now again, if you have your compass or protractor, you can actually draw okay, from the radius of curvature or center of curvature. You can actually precisely draw the concave mirror, but we can actually always estimate. Okay. So as if you are uh, drawing a semicircle okay, for concave mirror. So it doesn't need to be perfect, okay? So this is our concave mirror now. The next thing that we need to do is to measure the distance of our object, which is three, three centimeters. So from our vertex, here is the location of our object. And again, we do not know the height of our object. So we will assume that it looks like this, okay? Now let's have the arrowhead here. So this is our object. And again, uh, there are four principal rays. We have the FP ray, we have the PF ray, we have the VV ray, and we have the CC ray. At least two rays, okay? We can actually use to determine the image form, okay, by a concave mirror using uh, through ray diagramming. So let's have first the FP ray. Now for the FP ray here, we can't use the FP ray because our object, sorry, this is our focus. This is our focal point, okay, our focus. Uh, we cannot do the FP ray here because our object is located here between the vertex and the focal point. Okay, so we cannot have our incident ray okay, that will pass through the focal point here since our object is here. So we can actually start first with the PF ray. So let's have our incident ray, which is the P ray, which is parallel to the principal axis. Okay, this is our P ray. And again, it will be reflected, okay, passing through the focal point. Okay, passing through the focal point. Let's have an arrow here. So this is now our P F ray, an incident ray that is parallel to the principal axis and reflected passing through the focal point or focus. Now, we cannot pair it with the CC ray since our object is again here between the vertex and the focal point, but we can pair it with this VV ray. Okay, so again, we will apply the law of reflection for the VV ray. So again, from the tip of our object, moving towards the vertex or the center of our curved mirror and then it will be reflected same angle as the angle of our angle of incidence here so this is our 
reviewing. Okay, the angle here should be similar to the angle here. Now notice that the reflected rays will not is it is moving divergingly. Okay, so even if I'm going to extend this, they will not merge. However, if I will extend behind the mirror or at the back of the mirror, so I will have here my virtual rays. I'm going to represent them using broken lines. They will merge. Okay. The reflected rays will merge behind the mirror or as if the reflected rays uh, came from the virtual side okay, of the concave mirror. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to extend this reflected ray here. Okay, I'm going to draw broken lines. Next here also for this uh, V-ray here, I'm going to extend. Let me just adjust my camera here. Even here, extend it more. Okay, notice that my virtual rays merge behind the mirror or at the back of the mirror and above the upper, uh, above the principal axis. So in, if the merging happen above the principal axis, which always happen for virtual image, of course, the orientation of my image would be the same with the orientation of my object. So here from the merging point, going to draw the image let me just extend a little bit my principal axis here and let me draw the arrow here okay so it's very obvious okay the image that was formed here if the object is placed between the focal point i uh, sorry between the vertex and the focal point here so let's use the acronym lost to describe the image form here for the location it is actually located behind the mirror behind the mirror or at the back of the mirror the orientation the orientation of the image is the same with the orientation of my object so i would say upright or erect and for the size it's very obvious that my image okay is bigger compared to my object so i could say enlarge and of course since the image was formed behind the mirror okay the type of image would be it's a virtual image okay so always remember that you will be extending the reflected rays behind the mirror or at the back of the mirror if the actual or real reflected rays will not merge in front of this curved mirror. So you always do that, try to extend it if the rays will merge behind. If so, therefore you will have this kind of, of image which is a virtual image. <laughs>